Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. And in this video, we are going to create a 16-bit card game. And we are going to use Playmaker to create the card movement. So if you want to create it using C Sharp, you can click the button here. Okay, so I've prepared a couple of things here. First, I'm going to go to the folder here. And inside the sprites, I've already had the card racer sprites. And I'm going to provide the link in the description. This asset is courtesy to user Tito Petri from Sketchfab. It's a very nice 3D model and I convert this to a sprite using Blender. I also create a circuit texture like this and also going to provide this in the description. And I'm going to explain how we set up the scene here. So here in the scene, I have a box or cube object scaled to 200 on the x-axis, 200 on the z-axis and a very small value on the y-axis. And I also reposition the Y position so the surface exactly at the zero point of the Y axis. And for the shader, it's actually using an unlit shader texture and I'm using this circuit texture here. And for the player, it's basically an empty game object. I put all of the player component under this game object here. And there are two components. The first one will be a spear. And for the spear collider, just add a spear collider and also a rigid body and I've set the mass for the rigid body to 200 and the angular direct to 0.02 and the other one would be a card an empty game object and under this card we have this sprite here and for the sprite I've created an animator here with a blend tree and I'm using a float parameter to drive this animation inside the blend tree so if we select the card sprite here and select the blend tree you'll see that if we adjust the value here, the sprite changes from each of the state here. So you'll need to create all of the animation here using the sprite. And basically the animations only consist one frame of each of the sprite here. So for right one is actually this sprite here and the right two is this sprite here, only one sprite on the animation and so forth. The same goes with the left side. And then I've put all of the animation that I've created here as a motion on our blend tree and set the value accordingly. So the left animation or the left state should fill the range from zero to negative one. And the right state should fill the range from zero to one. Okay, so yeah, this is basically how we set up the animation. And the other thing that we need to import is the standard asset here. Just import this and then make sure you import the camera component, the cross-platform input component, and also the editor for cross-platform input. Once you've import this asset, you can just go to the standard assets folder under the camera prefabs. Just use the multi-purpose camera and drag it to the scene here. For the target, we can use the card object under the player here because we are going to move the spear to move the card and the card will follow the spear. So let's just drag the card as the target and I'm going to change the move speed to 15, turn speed to 30 and the roll speed to 5. And we can disable the follow tilt here. And the last thing you need in this project here is the ecosystem add-ons for Playmaker. So I'm going to import that because I've already downloaded. So here under assets, I'm going to use import package and I'm going to go to the plugin folders of mine and import this. We need this package to import custom actions that are not initially available from the Playmaker bundle. And now we've set up all of the game objects we need for the game. Let's create the behavior part. And now to create the behavior using Playmaker, I'm going to move the animation window back here and I'm going to open the Playmaker editor window and let's just drag this to the panel below here and now we can start creating finite state machine so first let's select the card game object and let's create a new fsm by right clicking here and then click at fsm so i'm going to rename this fsm to forward motion and we also need to add a rigid body here for performance reason when we are moving object, we should have a rigid body components attached to it. But since we are not going to 
simulate the dynamics on this card object, we can just set this to is kinematic and disable the use gravity. The basic concept of the card movement is that we are going to add force to the spear based on the card forward direction. And the card will follow the spear position. At the same time, we are also going to control the Y rotation of the card. And this will cause a change on the forward direction. Hence, this will also change the movement direction of the spear. This way, we will be able to steer and navigate the spear while adding force to it. Here, inside the forward motion FSM, we need to add an action, which is the get button action. And we are going to use this button to accelerate. So we are going to use fire run button to accelerate. And on the keyboard is control. And on the mouse is left click. And we want to store the result to a Boolean. So let's just create a new variable. And I'm going to rename this accelerate. And make sure every frame is checked. And then we want to use a convert bool to float here. And for the boolean, we want to use the accelerate variable. And for the float variable, we are going to create a new variable. Let's just call this speed and make sure every frame is checked. We want to set this false value to zero and the true value to a new variable. So let's just create a new variable and let's just call this acceleration. And here under the variable, we want to select the acceleration variable and then check the inspector so we can modify this here in the inspector. And I'm going to set the default value to 55. And basically whenever we accelerate, the speed value will become 55. And if we release the button, it will goes back to zero. And now we want to grab the forward of the cart object. So let's just use transform direction. And here, in order to grab the forward, we can just set the local direction to 001. So one on the Z axis and zero on the rest of the other axis. And store the result to a new factor three variable. So let's just call this forward and make sure every frame is checked. And the next action that we want to use is the float lerp. But as you can see here, it's not available on the initial install of the Playmaker. So we need to import this from ecosystem. Let's go to the Playmaker menu. Under the add-ons, I'm going to open the ecosystem browser. And then here, I'm going to search for float lerp. And now I'm going to get the Unity 5 version. So this one here, I'm going to press get. Now it's imported and currently it's compiling. Now if we go to the action browser, you see that we have this float lerp. I'm going to add this. And I'm going to create a new variable for storing the lerp value. And I'm going to call this current speed. And this value will be interpolated to the speed value. So if the speed value is zero or the player did not press the button, then the current speed will gradually goes back to zero. But if the accelerate button is pressed, then the current speed will gradually raise to 55 or the default value of the acceleration here because speed is basically either zero or the acceleration value depending of the state of the button. And here we want to store the result back to the current speed. And also I'm going to change the amount to 12. You can experiment with this amount here. And for the option lerp against delta time, I'm going to make sure this is checked so the performance consistent because we are measuring this in time not in frames so let's just minimize all of this here and now we want to multiply the forward factor with the current speed so let's just add a factor 3 multiply and then for the factor variable we are going to pick the forward and the multiplier we are going to pass the current speed and make sure every frame is checked now we have this accelerate mechanics created. We want to add force to the spear game object. So instead of using the owner as the game object, we need to specify game object and then expand the player here and then drag the spear. And we want to pass the forward as the vector value here. So let's just pass the forward. And for the force mode, we want to change this to acceleration. Make sure every frame is checked and 
make sure that the space is set to world. And the other thing that we want to set up is we want to set up the position of the card to always follow the spear. So we need to use the get position action and this is for getting the spear position. I'm going to use the specify game object and then drag the spear and make sure every frame is checked and save the value to a factor variable. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this spear position and then we want to use the set position to set the position of the card to the spear position. So let's just put the spear position variable as the value of the factor. Make sure every frame is checked and for the space we want to also set this to roll. And make sure that set positions are stacked below the get position. And here under the add force we need to make sure also we add a weight or gravity to the y-axis. So I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this gravity. And here under the variables, let's just enable the gravity so it's visible on the inspector. I'm going to set this to negative 20. And let's give it a try. If we press play and then we accelerate, you see that we can move. But Right now we cannot steer the player so we need to create that in order to create the steering aspect of the mechanics we need to create a new fsm and let's just call this fsm to steering and here we want to use the get access row but we don't have that so we need to download also that action from the ecosystem so let's open the ecosystem again and i'm going to search for get access row and now once the result is shown we can just get and it doesn't matter if we download the unity 4 version because it works on this version so let's just press get and now it's compiling okay so if we go to the action browser now we have this get access row and basically get access row is different than get access because with get access row there are no in between values between the zero or the one or the negative one so if we press the right or the left key then the value will snaps to one or to negative one or if we don't press anything it will snaps back to zero so it's kind of like integer and for the axis name we can just pass horizontal for the left and right control and for the multiplier we want to create a new variable and let's just call this steering Sorry, I'm going to rename this. And we want to expose this on the inspector so we can modify this here. And let's set its value to 35. Now we need to store the value or the result value from the get access row action. So let's just create a new variable and I'm going to call this rotate and make sure every frame is checked. And we need to also use a float lerp here. So let's just add that. And for the from float, let's just create a new variable. And let's just call this current rotate or rotation. And for the to float, we want to pass the rotate value here. And for the amount, we want to set this to 4. And also enable the lerp against delta time. And you can experiment with this value to find other values that might serve better in your case and then we want to store the result back to the current rotation so let's just pick the current rotation variable and now the next action that we need to add is the rotate action and basically with this rotate we want to rotate the card game object and we want to rotate on the y axis so let's just pass the current rotation to the y angle and for the space just set this to self and make sure per second is checked and we want to check also the fixed update so the rotation synchronized with the motion of our mechanics or movement and now the other thing that we want to set up is the animator related action so we want to pass the input axis to the animator horizontal parameter here so let's add a get axis this time 
and for the axis name it should be the same horizontal and multiplier can be one and we can just store this to a new variable and let's just call this animation horizontal make sure every frame is checked and let's add a new set animator float and for the parameter we want to pass the parameter name which is horizontal and it requires an animator component so I'm going to specify game object and then expand the card game object here and drag the card sprite to the game object slot and for the value we can just pass the animation horizontal float that we've created from the get axis action here so let's just use variable and then pick the animation horizontal and make sure every frame is checked and save this here another thing that we need to set up is under the spear we need to change the mass to 300 it works better with heavier mass and for the drag let's set this to 2 and save this and now let's give it a try if we move here we can turn as you can see and when the character turns the animations place the turning animation plays there is a problem though if we go to the card game object here as you can see it's actually floating because the card game object are following the center position of the spear here in order to fix this we need to push down the card sprite game object so with the game pause let's just push this and I think the Y value should be half of the spear radius so let's take a look okay it's 0 0.5 so we need to set this to negative 0 0.25 so let's just stop this and modify it here on the editor and now if we try to play this the card won't be floating anymore okay so yeah that is basically how you create a simple card motion using a sphere collider and also playmaker thanks a lot for watching and if you like the videos please hit that like button and also subscribe see you on the next video